My name's Harry Nordgren. I'm a veteran, retired veteran of the United States Marine Corps and retired teacher coach from uh, Hot Springs High School here in Truth or Consequences. And I'm here welcoming today Dick Lanford, who is also a veteran of the United States Marine Corps and, uh, and one of my former students. So to begin the interview, uh, Dick, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, like I said, I'm Dick Lamford. I served in the Marine Corps from 2002 to 2006. Uh, I graduated from here at Hot Springs in 2002. And currently, right now, I'm coaching here at Hot Springs High School and working for my dad out on the ranch. Did, uh, did you do anything after your graduation prior to joining the Corps? I went to Australia. I got to play football in Australia and then came back. And two weeks later, I was headed to San Diego. Why did you pick the Marines? Honestly, probably because of you and my dad. So my dad is a former Marine, and then, you know, going through school and stuff with you was a great push towards that direction. I kind of always knew I wanted to serve, but, you know, you had a great deal with that, along with my dad being Well, I appreciate that. Good Marine, good, good, good student, good football player. Um, what did you think about uh, when you were getting ready to ship out for boot camp? Uh... I mean, you know how it goes. You're a little bit nerve-wracking, not know, understanding what exactly to expect. But, And then, if you remember me in school, I probably weighed about 120 pounds when I was leaving and about this tall. So I was kind of intimidating thinking that, you know, I would be outclassed because you know what Marines are, you know, in the movies and all that stuff. And when you show up, you realize it, it doesn't really matter and you just got to do your job. So I was scared at first, but... You know, after the first 24, 48 hours, you're so tired, it doesn't matter anymore. You remember your first Marine haircut? Yeah, yeah, that one kind of hurt a little bit, the little buzz cut. Yeah, yes, I tried indeed. to follow Coach's T cut, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, what kind of memories do you have of your last few days of civilian life? Mm, really, I mean, not much. You, you know, you go to MEP before you ship out, so you're just kind of sitting in a hotel room by yourself just wondering if this was truly the right decision and what am I about to get into but I mean when you make the decision it's go time yeah, once you sign the papers here yeah you're, that's you're, it that's it that's <laughs> it that's for sure um where'd you go through boot camp San Diego San Diego yeah, real, so, real Marines go to San Diego Hollywood Marine yeah there you go yeah. um what is one of your uh most interesting experiences in boot camp that we can say on camera <laughs> sure yes I hope so uh I guess the one that I kind of talk about the most was in boot camp you know that we couldn't take uh anything back to the barracks right so one time one of our guys did that he was a gear watch fire watch and he took chow back to the barracks and we got busted and that was when I realized that this is not a joke and you know you got to do what you're told because we paid for that dearly and <laughs> I, I I to this day that's the hardest day of my life Lo lots of PT uh -huh, a little Lo bit lots of PT little duck walk scrubbing when uh, when I went through OCS, we were on the second deck, and uh, my uh, we called him a sergeant instructor. Would be a, a DI in the enlisted uh, uh, boot camp. When we had a fire drill, we had to throw everything out the windows: foot lockers, wall lockers, racks, mattresses, everything. And then once the fire drill was over, bring it back in and and set our squad bay up. Oh, so that nice. was really yeah. Uh, it's kind of similar. Similar yep. to our day when they found Chow in the in the barracks. When uh, when did you complete boot camp? So it would have been October of two thousand and two. So I went in, you know, it's thirteen weeks. Went in in August twenty third, got out October eighteenth. And what was your MOS? So it was uh, in the combat engineer battalion. I was more like an electrician slash generator mech slash uh, water technician, like that portion of the support battalion what kind of advanced training did you get or was it all oj uh, ojt once you got to the battalion yeah pretty so much you, so you went right from boot camp to uh, which battalion uh so i was seventh engineer battalion in camp pendleton but first you know you, 
we had to go from boot camp to MCT, Marine Comm kind of training, mm -hmm. then MOS training. And then as soon as I got out, that's when we invade or out of my MOS school, that's when we invaded Iraq. And then so I was part of the casualty replacement battalion right out of that, waiting to go to Kuwait. So let's see here, how am I, how am I gonna say this? When you were going through your uh, last bit of training, do you remember hiking up a certain Oh, the mountain? crucible? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. So we won't report, repeat what uh, the mountain is called um, uh, by every Marine who's ever had to do that, but uh, it's quite a moving experience to get to the top and know you, you're you're going to be a Marine. Yeah, and you you know you sober that up for a quick because you're going off of it and going down was was <laughs> brutal. Yes. And it, then they think you're all happy and you get that. I don't know if you guys had it, but we got that warrior's breakfast when you get down to the bottom. So they make you feel like, oh, you're a Marine now, so you can go eat all the chow you want, no more rations. And then we ate like, you know, kings for about five, ten minutes, and then they PT'd us after that. So <laughs> welcome to the Marine Corps. <laughs> there you go. There you go. A lot of people don't realize that, uh, especially when you're, you're, uh, you're carrying a combat load, which is anywhere from 60 to 100, maybe 120 pounds, that going down hill is even more brutal oftentimes than going going yeah. uphill it's it's an experience especially after the crucible yes when you're, you don't have much to eat or drink or sleep tell us uh, well you've, you've kind of done this already you've told us about your first assignment and uh, where you were stationed uh, in the United States and when did you go to Kuwait so I made in my four years I did three deployments overseas uh, the first one I went to Kuwait I was there for about four months so that would have been like April of 03 to, I think we left in June of 03, because you know how that works. The Marine Corps invaded. We're not a holding, you know, force. We're, a, I guess, a kick-ass force, and we let the Army take over. Well, we ended up doing that, and then so we bailed out of there, and the Army took over. And then a year later, I went back to Iraq, because we had to come back, and I went to Fallujah, Iraq that time. It, I was there for seven months and then came back for six months. And then I, you know how it is in garrison. I got tired of garrison. So I asked them, like, either send me on a mule or send me back to Iraq because I can't take this California world anymore. <laughs> so luckily, I guess, I didn't get the mule. I ended up going right back to Fallujah, the same exact tent spot, the same exact thing. What were you doing there? So that's two tours you were in Fallujah. What were you what was So we were just that... So an infantry support battalion basically is what we did. So, um, you know, we would set up a forward operating base, drop electricity, drop a generator so that they could stay comfort and then support them logistically in certain areas. And then we did that. The cool part was, I guess, is when I was supporting them my second time, I was actually supporting 2-5, which is my brother's battalion, battalion, before he was in there. So I knew his first sergeant and everybody before he actually joined the battalion. So where was uh, Ben at at this stage when you're, you're, you're like your last um, uh, deployment? To so Florida. my last deployment, he was in boot camp and then he was in 29 Palm. Okay. So we got to hang out in the Marine Corps together for about three months after I got back and then I got out and he he deployed to Iraq with my battalion and then part of the battalion also went to him with Afghanistan so had I stayed in I might have actually got to deploy with him. With your brother yeah and I, that's something that never happened with me my my brother was stationed uh, at uh, second division with with me and he was in the 10th marines at the time I was in the 6th marines and kind of just the opposite. He got out uh, uh, before I did. I, I stayed forever till they uh, they told me I, it yeah, was time for me to yeah. pack my track. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they do that. So when did your service uh, end? When did your military service so end? So July 22nd, uh, 2006. Okay. Well, did you have any difficulty readjusting to civilian life? No. No, it was just what it was. It, I was enjoying it. <laughs> you were, did, didn't mind the, uh, yeah. the, 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 the old, old, old dark 30 revelry, right. etc. Yeah. 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 What, uh, what do you think is your best, uh, uh memory of, of wearing a uniform? Ooh. I would say, I guess this is kind of a selfish thing, but when I was able to come back to a Friday night football game after making it through boot camp and getting to, 
see the change in myself and being recognized from the town and all that stuff. And then I obviously, you know, coming home for my brother's graduation in dress blues. I mean, that you don't get that opportunity very no. often. So that no. was kind of a cool one. I mean, most of my time I was over in Iraq. So you were gone and deployed and, and stayed deployed, basically. Yeah. Yep. Um, if you had to uh, say you learned um, an important lesson, what would it be? Ooh, one. Or, well, you, I would, you, you know, you know how this is. I mean, I think accountability and, you know, you hear, you know, the football players and all that stuff. And I talk to them about this, you know, when they break out and they say brotherhood or they say family or they say, you know, uh, fixed bayonets, all those that we kind of know to be actually true. You know, those lessons of responsibility, accountability, dependability. I mean, I don't think you and friendship, you don't get those in in any other place in that demeanor. Like those are friends that been through what you've been through that you i mean i still hang out with my buddies from boot camp and stuff like that because you have that bond. yeah the intensity of what you go through really makes misery you, loves company you, you better believe it makes you bond <laughs> yeah um what would um uh, what would you say to uh a, a, a few guys and gals that were sitting here right now that were contemplating uh military service what would your advice be well i mean it'd probably be the same as yours basically you do it i mean you this country is the greatest country in the world and only a few selected people actually choose to defend it and you know you wear that badge forever that you actually made the choice and especially today's age there's no draft i mean you made the choice to defend what what we have and you know and and going to that too you know this year you know with our homecoming game we had the tribute to the 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 people that had died during the Afghanistan evacuation and a couple of those kids carried flags and I asked them why they chose to carry flags to honor those and they said they wanted to honor the fallen but they also wanted to honor me as a coach and as a former Marine they wanted to carry the flag to honor me as well and that was that was kind of cool so I, anybody that wants to join I, I highly recommend it. very cool very cool that you guys recognize what you're doing and that's it, unless you have something else you want to uh, to add. No, no. I, I, I'm curious to see your answers to these questions. You're because curious to see my answers. I remember, I, and you know, I, I tell some people this all the time, that before Thursday nights, before our football games, I tried to carry the tradition that you did in telling stories to honor, you know, I, I focus on Medal of Honor recipients because I, I think those stories are ultimate sacrifices, and I tried to they carry are. that honor on with you, and it, to me, I, I think more stories like that need to be told to people who actually recognize what people sacrifice for what we have. So I agree 100%. I'm glad you're carrying on the tradition. I'm trying. I'm there trying. Outstanding. Thanks, Outstanding. sir. Thank you.